Okay, welcome to the Biblical Truths of Our Hymns. And I guess from time to time, we're going to outstretch, reach out beyond a hymn. And maybe once in a while, like today, we're going to go to a song that is found on the radio and look at some truth to that. And today we're going to look at a song, and it's titled and made popular by Barry Manilow. I write the songs. Now I'm going under the fair use law. I am going to take this song and I'm going to use it for Christian education. And today we're going to look at the devil, Satan, Lucifer. And how this song, I believe, though I'm not saying it's a biography of Satan himself, but man, it's close. Now, I Write the Song is written by Bruce Arthur Johnson, born Benjamin Baldwin. And he he's character with the Beach Boys and hits like that. But it says Johnson left the Beach Boys in 1972 to embark in a solo career. And he wrote some things. And when it comes to I Wrote the Songs, which has been done over 200 artists, including Frank, Frank Sinatra, winning the Grammy. Johnson said, and I quote, how did I win a Grammy for a song that I wrote in my car? And it mentions rock and roll. And rock and roll, the source of rock and roll came from a DJ, I forget which state and city. But rock and roll has been described as the functions and the actions of fornication and adultery in the back seat of a car. So, and I'll tell you, that's just, when you look up rock and roll, where did it come from? The actions of a couple in the back seat of a car. This is where this song was written, according to the writer. Now, let me go through and read to you what the, what the lyrics are, and then we'll break it down. Uh, turn to Ezekiel 28. Now, this song, to me, my opinion, is close to Satan. And when I worked the grocery store, we went, we had the music piped over the, the intercom. And, we're and this one night, I'm, I'm stocking the shelves and listening to the music would aggravate me. And this is one of the songs that God says, listen, do your job. Never mind the music. Listen to the words. And when I started working for the grocery store, I, I started. I started listening to the words. And it's remarkable that I write the songs. Now listen, I, I'm going to try not to sing it because, you know, this song is going to tell you everything. I've been alive forever. Well, that's not Bruce Johnson. That's not Barry Manilow or Frank Sinatra. I wrote the very first song. I put words in the melodies together. I am music. And I write the song. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. Sort of a soft drink commercial. Remember that? You had to have been in the 70s, I think it was. I write the songs of love and special things. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs. I write the songs. My home lies deep within you. And I've got my own place in your soul. Now, when I look out through your eyes, I am young again, even though I am very old. Oh, my music makes you dance and gives you spirit to take a chance. I wrote some rock and roll. There it is. So you can move. There it is. He knew what the definition of rock and roll was. Make you move. Music fills your heart. Well, that's a real fine place to start. It's from me. It's from you. It's from you. It's from me. It's a world sympathy. Sympathy. All right, so let's look at Ezekiel 28, verse 13. Again, he's talking to the king of Tyrus, verse 12. We'll verse, read verse 12. But he's addressing a man 
in tires. Like Jesus said to Peter, get, get behind me, Satan. And God will address, because God is Jesus, the devil through men. The son of man take up a lamentation, Ezekiel, almost said Jeremiah, upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden. Now the king of Tyrus wasn't in Eden. <clears throat> the garden of God. Okay, now we got now the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. Almost an imitation of the breastplate of the high priest. Almost an imitation of the walls of New Jerusalem. God loved color. The workmanship of thy tabrets, here's music, and of thy pipes, that's music, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. This being has never been forever. He's been created by God. Thou art the anointed cherub. So he's not the king of Tyrus. He's being dressed. The king of... Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Heaven. Thou hast walked and up and down the midst of the stones of fires. You've heard of fire walkers. People imitating the devil. Thou was perfect in thy ways from day that was created until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, ooh, he's got merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. He's associated with violence. And thou hast sinned. Well, we're not talking about God. This creature is sin. Therefore, will I cast thee out. I mean, as I cast thee, yeah, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God and will destroy thee, O covering cherub, the stones, from amidst the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up before because of beauty. Thou hast corrupted wisdom. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will. Lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. All right, let's take a couple places with this. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, verse 30. If you can't keep up, write it down. Pause the video. We got much to say. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised. Now, we're going to go back to this hymn, this song again, but let's look at the scripture, shall we? Notice what we're going to read in the scriptures and what is in this, this, I almost said hymn again, song. All right, let's go over to Revelation chapter 12. And the Lord has given me, these are not the verses I've written down, but we're going through, going to go try to quick because I think this is going to take some time. But, I hope we can get it all in one recording. Revelation 12. It's verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Verse 10. Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, verse 9. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. I'm trying to make emphasis to what words in the Bible, to what words are in this song. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In Genesis chapter 3. We're going to go all over the Bible. And thank you for recording that. You can say, okay, pause. Let me go find it. Pause. I pause. Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Ezekiel 18. Uh, Ezekiel 28. 
Let's look at Isaiah 14. Let's look at Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. And if you're a Bible student, you know these verses where we're going. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou... My Bible is so marked it, to wrong where sometimes I can't see the words. I apologize. How art thou cut down to the ground? which thou hast weakened the nations. For thou hast said in thy heart, Ezekiel, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. It's the angels. I will sit also among the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, God says. Genesis and this one. I know it's there. I have to find it. Genesis 6. Genesis 6 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them. Daughters of men. The sons of God, not the children of Ham, not the children of, of Seth, not the angels. The children, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So here's angels coming down, looking at the women, and say, hoo hoo, I like you. And they're mating, and they make giants. That's Bible. You're going to have to trust me on that. There'll be other studies. Genesis. Oh, what was I just thinking? Oh, Genesis chapter 3. No, Genesis chapter 4. My mind went rushing quicker than what my mouth can do. Genesis chapter 4 is the story of Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel, the murderer. God sends him out to be a vagabond in the earth. Verse 16, Cain went forth from the presence of the Lord. He left the Lord like the devil. Get out of heaven. Get out of here. Bye. Take some of my angels. And he's cast out in Revelation 12. So Cain left the presence of the Lord. All right, he's the murderer. He's the one that brought his own offering. God was not pleased with his offering. He killed his brother uh, Abel because Abel was righteous before God and brought the correct offering. Cain is a religion that kills the good people of God. So here, Cain went out from the present Lord, dwelt in the land of Nod and east of Eden. Cain knew his wife. He got his wife. He got his wife from his father-in-law. And conceive and bear Enoch, blah, 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 blah. Now let's go down to verse 21. Uh, verse 20. These are the family of the murderer. These are the family of the vagabond. This is the family of the ones that left God. Okay, 20. And Ada bear Jubal. He was the father of such that dwell in tents and of such that had cattle. Moo. Sacred cows, India cows. Eat more chicken. Moo. You do know about cows and worship. You do know that cattle. Ah, cat. You do know that Aaron made a golden calf. You do know that, right? Almost said a calf made a golden Aaron. You do know about cows and worship. You do know, you know, that, that there's a computer company that uses the spots of a cow. You do know about the worship of cows and the holiness of cows in Egypt and in India and in Babylon. You know, the expression holy cow. You do know about you do know about Babylon, Egypt, and Rome, and you do know about Christian history, and you do know about pagan history, I hope. I hope you don't I hope you're not ignorant about that, but here we go. And his brother's name was Jubal. Jubilee. We're gonna have a Jubilee. And he was a father of such. Now here's the here's the family of Cain that left God. That's the vagabond. That's the murderer that brought religion. The very first religion. Chapter four, verse three. In the process of time, it came to Cain brought the fruit of the ground, the offering to the Lord. God said, "I don't want that. I don't want the works of your hand. I don't want vegetarian." God says, "I want blood." Abel brought. 
Verse 21, he is the father of all such as handled the harp, music, and organ. That's the first music of man mentioned in the Bible, and it comes from a murderer's family of Cain. Musical instruments came of Cain. I mean, you got to get that. You got to study your Bible. You got to get things right. You can't go into believing what magazines and newspapers, everything said. You've got to do study. Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a man that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of God. 1 John 3, 12. 1 John 3, 12. 1 John 3, 12. Now, I am not going to say when I run to this verse, I am not going to say that Cain was of uh, Eve and the devil had sex. I am not saying that. Some do. I don't. 1 John 3, 12, I think this is an ambassador. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, who slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Genesis 4, because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. So, here we go. We're looking at a man who's a murderer, who left God's presence, who was not approved of God, and we see music in his family. Now, when we look at love, and I'm, bear with me, because I'm looking up scriptures here. Add it up. Bear with me. First John. Four sixteen. First John four sixteen. Now, the song mentioned love. John four sixteen. And we know, we have known and believed that love, I'm going to try this again, excuse me. We have known and believed the love that God has toward us. God is love. There it is. There's the expression, God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So God is love. Satan has no love. An attribute of God is love, and that only comes from God. If you don't know God, you don't know you don't know love. John 8 44. So when you're in a rock and roll, humpy dumpy in the back seat of a car, that ain't love. That's lust. That's lust. And we'll look at that in a moment, I guess. So let's see who the devil is. John 8, 44. In the mouth of Jesus. Ye are of your father the devil. There he is. The lust of your father you will do. Back to the car. What's the expression? If you love me, you will. You don't love me if you don't. And I grew up as a man. Father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Cain was the characteristics of the devil. And a bold not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Oh, I love you. I love you. What's all the songs on the radio? I love you. I love you. Love you. Love you. Love me. Love. It's a lie. They don't love you. Except when you give them money for their stupid, filthy albums. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. This is the devil. For he is a liar, the devil, and the father of it. So, let's look at 1 John 2.16. Let's look at the devil's tools. 1 John 2.16. Here's the devil's tools. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Rock and roll. Get your pants off. Get a condom. Get on the pill. Safe sex. 
The lust of the eyes. <laughs> you look so good. Pornography. And the pride of life. You know how many women I slept with this weekend? You know how many women I took home? You know how many beers I had? You know how drunk I got? Man, if you take all the women I slept with, How about I write the songs? That kind of pride book. There's no pride in God. And a Christian ought not to have pride. God, pride is a sin. God is well done. Those are three tool, tools. Lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. That describes music. Describes music. And I'm going to say, yeah, again, you know, the devil did not write this, this song, but man, there's the characteristics of the devil. So let's go back and see what we're at. All right. I've been alive forever. Well, Isaiah 14 says, before the creation of man, before the creation of, of the earth that we have here, before, you know, when God visited the earth, it was dark and, and formless and void. There were beings in heaven called cherubims. And you find them in Ezekiel. You find them in Revelation. You find them again in Genesis chapter 3. They're not angels, but they're beings created by God. And one of them was called Lucifer. And Lucifer was the, was the choir director. He was the music leader of all heaven. And he had the pipes. He had a one-man band in his created body of beauty. And he will live forever when the Bible tells us that when he goes in the lake of fire that burneth forever. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever. I'm looking that one up so I don't. Uh, So you don't think I'm. It says Revelation 14, 11, and the smoke of their torment is ascended forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and the image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So the, the devil, the Lucifer, the, de the Satan is going to live forever in a flame of lake of fire forever. And I wrote the very first song. I don't know about that. It's not recorded. I don't know in heaven if he did write the very first song or God did. I don't know. But you got to remember John 8, 44, the devil's a liar. Very first song that you come into the Bible is the song of Moses coming out of Egypt. I put the words and melodies together. Maybe he did in heaven. Maybe he did come up with the spiritual songs and the, the hymns that are sung in heaven, put them together for all the angels to sing. Maybe. I don't know. I don't have that information. I am music. What did Ezekiel 28 said? He has the pipes, the tablets. What was the, what was the first man music in the Bible? It's a man of the family of the wicked one. The murderer. I write the songs. Do you think God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit inspires the songs that are on the radio, AM, FM, and, and what's their satellite and whatever stuff is out there? Do you think if you were to walk in the music section of any store today where they sell CDs, cassette tapes, how old I am, and, and albums, do you think uh, uh, majority of those songs that are found in that section, do you think they're by God, you're a fool, you're kidding yourself? Do you think, who do you think comes up with this contemporary music that can go to anybody, including Jesus? Do you think those are written by Christians? They're written by the devil, masquerading as Christians. Come on, man. You got to get with the terms here. And I got another one. I mean, if you think all this music is, is all holy and right, 
2 Corinthians 11, 15. 2 Corinthians 11, 15. There are great, wonderful hymns and, and spiritual songs out there by man. Yes, there are. And then there are religious phonies out there. Second Corinthians, we'll start 11, 13. For there are false apostles. They're not right. They call themselves the Apostolic Church. They are, and like the Roman Catholic Church, we, we can trace our lineage all the way back to the laying of the hands of the apostles. They're liars. Deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. It's a whole religion, a whole denomination. And no marvel for Satan, there he is himself, is transformed. Transformers, change before your eyes. Remember those toys I grew up with? Into an angel of light. Beware of that light at the end of the tunnel. It may be the devil coming. Or a choo-choo train. You don't want to go in a tunnel with a with a light coming in and be a choo-choo train. Therefore, it is no great thing if his Satan's ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. They look like they're right. They say what they they, they sound right. They look right, but they're not right. And their music, oh, it sounds right. It looks right, but it's not right. It's of the devil. What are you saying? Contemporary Christian music, majority of it is of the devil. I didn't say all of it. I said majority of it. That's why we're doing the biblical truth for our hymns. So when we look at our hymns and we can say, is it right or is it wrong? We found many that are wrong. We found many that misquote the scriptures, though they look very close to the scriptures. Listen, many of the hymns that we looked at, many of them, they're, they're, they're like a modern Bible. They change the scriptures. You know, I'm for the King James Bible, but I'm going to sing a hymn that changes the Bible just like the modern Bibles. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. They say music is the universal language. You can turn to any country station in America and that song will appear at least once during that week on probably all 50 states of the music country channel station. You can hear songs on a radio in Florida where I live, Daytona Beach, and you'll probably hear them in Anchorage, Alaska within a week, the same songs. And maybe in overseas. I write songs of love. How can you, Satan? You don't know what love is. God is love. And yet what song, what is the number one word found in the radio dial, the CDs, the albums, the cassette tapes, and whatever things there are out there for today? What is the number one word of expression in this love? The world's got to have love. I love you. Bring your love to me. Love is an... And what does man want? He wants to be loved. And he'll be loved by music. He'll be loved by another. He'll be fantasized by a person of the opposite sex. Or today, to be fantasized with a person of the same sex. But they overlook the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We love him because he first loved us. The devil gets you look at a, at a love song and he gets your eyes off the love of God, Jesus Christ. And special things. Oh, he's got a, he's got a love he's got a song for everything. Happy birthday to you. We wish you a merry Christmas. Old Tom and Bob, old Tom and Bob. Man, he's got he's got songs of religion. He's got songs of celebration. He's got songs of death. He's got songs of all kinds of songs of all special interests. The devil's got songs. You ever go into? I remember going to a record store. Records a little. Actually, they're coming back, so you probably know what they are. I remember going in there. There'll be tables and tables, and there'll be a little tab: hard rock, soft rock. Contemporary rock, classical, southern, southern gospel, gospel, uh, pop, rap. And they all got all these different titles of the type of music. I, I remember it used to be fun. We used to get the Columbia Record 
uh, uh, magazine in, in the mail, and that thing would have this pages and pages of titles. And there's just pages and pages of titles of Christian music you can find today. You know, there, there's the soft, there's the old fashioned hymnals, there's the modern, there's all kinds, all special things. You got it right, devil. There's all kinds of special interests of music. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. Boo hoo hoo hoo. That just tenderizes the poor little girl and makes them unchaste and makes them unclean and they lose their virginity by rocking and rolling. Satan's done a great deed of, of defiling our way. You know what Americans can't do today? Many Americans cannot blush no more. Blushing is practically gone. I like to see my, my daughter blushes when I get her embarrassed. I, I like that. Because you can't see women like that. You should be blushing over your, your filthiness. You should be blushing over your, your filthy mouth. You should be blushing over your filthy looks. You don't blush. You pride in it. You ever see, I, I've been in rock, listen, I'm, I, I, was, I was unsaved 18 years. I've been in rock concerts. I've been in hard rock. I've seen those women up there at the front stage. I've seen them remove their clothing and throw their clothing up at, at the people performing on the stage. I've seen it all. I see, oh, and you watch the old, the old videos of Elvis, the pelvis and all that other stuff. And the girls is longing and, and oh, devil's got it right. Listen, that's going on in your church today. The girls are lavishing over the band that's on, not the altar, but on the stage. That's that's hellish. That's that's men who are, are transforming themselves. They they look right, but they're not right. The churches where, where, where there's they they they, do, they get half naked. They do belly. Dust. That is of the devil. A Christian, true, Bible-believing music would get your heart to say, I am a sinner. I need to worship God and only God. And I need to repent. I need to lavish in what the glory of God. And it wouldn't make me. Ooh. I write the songs. I write the songs. What do you see that? I see barely, barely. I see where, 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 where the gospel of Jesus Christ is repeated four times. I see the devil say, I write the songs, I write the songs. Make sure you get that. I write the songs. No, David wrote the songs. Moses wrote songs. My home lies deep within you. Listen, I've been saved since 1987. You figure out it's 2020 right now. I have been saved. I was lost for 18 years. I grew up in the 70s with, with ballads. I grew up in the 70s with, with the pop culture. I grew up with pop rocks and I grew up with, with you know soft rock. I grew up with all that stuff. And I go into a I go into a grocery store, I go somewhere today, and I hear that old music, and my mouth and my head and my heart start singing those music. I was doing it in the grocery store when I worked in the grocery store. I would find myself stocking the shelves and singing that nasty, filthy music of the devil. Why? Because he has gone inside and deep inside me. Where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. And when the devil put that treasure in your heart of filthiness and vileness and wickedness, it don't appreciate God. It doesn't honor God. It gives the glory to Satan. And you can be washed, you can be born again, you can be saved, you can love the Lord, you can serve the Lord, you can be in a Bible-believing church, you can be in a King James Bible, you can read your Bible, you can study your Bible, you can love God, you can love the brethren, and when you go out in that world, you go in that filthy world, and that devil's music comes out, and if you heard that music when you were lost, that devil's music comes out through your heart and through your mouth, and you start saying, I write the songs that, oh, what am I doing? And it's just as worse as TV jingles. Come on, you know, if you're my age and you've been you've been lost for a while and, and you got say, you know, uh, blah, blah, this is, oh, what a relief it is. How do you spell Rolades? R-O-L-A-D-I-S. You know those. Mm -mm, good. You know all those. Why? Because the devil's put it inside your heart. I didn't say the devil wrote this song. I didn't say that this song is about the, uh, is the devil, but man, does it not preach the truth and he's the liar how can he be right to, how can he be the liar i write the song no bruce johnson wrote this song but look at the devil take the credit look at him take the credit 
I've got my own place in your soul. If you're unsaved and the devil has your place in your soul, prepare to go where, the, where hell, where it was made for the devil and his angels. Prepare. You better get a new birth. You better get adopted by God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ through Calvary, where Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. You better get that soul. You better get renewed. You better get reborn. You better get it right with God. Don't let the devil have a place forever in your soul. It'll go off into eternity in the lake of fire where you will live forever with the devil in torment. He won't tell you about that. Now when I look out through your eyes. Oh, let's look at Matthew 5.29. Matthew 5.29. Again, I'm using the fairly use. I am trying to teach Christians about the devil. About the devil. Uh, Matthew 5.29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Cast it out from thee. For it be unprofitable thee that one of your members should perish. And not that your whole body should be cast into hell. Jesus didn't preach about hell. Yes, he did. He says, be careful with your eyes. Because when you're in the tribulation period, if your eye defiles you, your eye will lead you to hell. What's the, what's the atmosphere? What's the lesson for a Christian here? Do we poke our eyeballs out? No, you better watch what you see. You better watch your eyes. You better put a guard on your eyes. You better watch your eyes. Because the devil will use them. Remember I told you? The lust of the eyes. He saw that the fruit was good. David saw a woman washing herself. Pornography. Women in bras and bikini, uh, uh, called bikinis. Women wearing underwear, and they call it a bikini bottom. Bikinis are nothing but bras and panties with a new name. Like shacking up for adultery and for fornication. It's about time you get some preaching. Matthew 6, 22. You need a Bible to be yelled at you. Matthew 6, 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be filled with darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. When I look out through your eyes, this song said, yeah, your eyes are dark with wickedness. When you look out, say, ooh, look at that. Look, ooh, look at that. Ooh, coveting, lusting. Jesus said, whoso looketh upon a woman and lusts after his heart has already committed adultery with her. You better watch out when you got the, the eyes of flesh. You better look out when he looks at the, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes. The devil wants you to have. When he says you want your eye to be single, have your eyes set forth on Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. And you've got to go through this life. you got to see those filthy billboards. you got to see those filthy advertisements on the, on the magazine rack. you got to see the filthiness of this world. But get your eyes on Jesus and get your eyes in the Bible. Read and study and repent of what your eyes see. David, don't look back at that woman just watching herself. Eve, get your eye off that tree. He says, I am young again, even though I am very old. I don't know what the age of the devil is. But the devil is revived. The devil is re-spirited. The devil feels young when he has your attraction, however he can use it, of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And when you fall into those three tools, you make the devil say, I'm young again. You know what the Christian says? I am born again, and I am not giving in to the devil. I am not giving in those sins. Lord God, forgive me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ and help me fight the devil of the sins that he puts in front of my face. 
How's that? Oh, my music makes you dance. Mark 6. Mark chapter 6. And there was good dance in the Bible. Mary went out with the women. women they, got the, they got the trembles. And they're singing the song of Moses. And the women are dancing together. David is overjoyed. David is excited. The ark and the tabernacle is coming home. And David is dancing. You do not see mixed dancing in the Bible. Mark, chapter 6, 22. How about this one? How about happy birthday to you? You belong in the zoo. And when the daughter of said Herodes. Well, let's look at verse 21, shall we? What? And when a convenient day was come to Herod on his birthday. Oh, made a supper to his lord's high captain, chief of state of Galilee. And when the daughter of said Herodes came in and danced and pleased Herod. The daughter of his wife is pleasing this man. You're a pervert. You're perverted. The daughter of your wife pleases you. Probably half naked dancing. I don't know. Doesn't say. But there she, her dancing. How dancing has come today. Well, you, 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 man, you, you, you're stuck on each other. The old-fashioned dance with, you know, you you, you, had, you you could stick a book between the two when they first started dancing. They weren't even touching. And how, how close they are, wrapped it up like two snakes in love. There's a, there's a holy dance found in the Bible, and there's an unholy dance. It gives your spirit to take a chance. Does God want you to take a chance, or does God want you to pray? You know, the Bible says that the men of God cast lots. Now, that's a form of gambling. Let me give you an illustration of casting lots. The disciples, Judas has died. Lord God, we got to have a man take Judas' spot. We got two men. We don't know which one. Man, they're just so close. They're so right, Lord God. They're, they're so proper. We can't tell which one you are. So, Lord, what we're going to do is we're going to draw straws. We're going to shoot dice, odd number, even number. We're going to throw, you know, stuff up in the air. We're going to white ball, black ball. How, I don't know how they did it. But, Lord, we're going to rely on you that whatever odd number, black ball, you know, the longest straw, whatever it is, we're going to have you, Lord God, choose the man. Lord God, I'm a farmer, uh, and I love you. I'm saved. I go to church, and Lord God, I got a chance. To, I, I, I can plant corn. I can plant succotash. I can plant green beans. I can plant pumpkins. Lord God, I don't know what to plant because I don't know what the weather is going to be next year. I don't know what the weather is going to be this year. I don't know how much rain we're going to get. Lord God, I'm going to ask you somehow. I'm going to say, Lord God, all these four crops. I'm going to cast die. I'm going to blackball. I'm going to take a straw. I'm going to pick a number. I'm going to, you know, put them in a hat and pick the one. Lord God, I want you to be involved with that. Chance of the devil, you put your money in, you pull that one arm, band it, and you lose. Cherry, 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 plum. You lose. Devil wants you to lose. Oh, I'm going to do good. I'm going to be good. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to get baptized. I'm going to do that. And you end up in hell. That's an eternal chance of damnation. That's what the devil, devil wants you to take a chance. Not God. I wrote some rock and roll so you can move. Again, you look it up. Rock and roll was, was, was conceived by a disc jockey, by what actions happens in the backseat of a car between a man and a woman, and most likely not married and young. Shocker shorbers. Being clean, trying to be clean. Music fills your heart. Oh, remember I said you go in the store and you end up. You know, music fills your heart that they pay advertisers great amounts of money to come up with that jingle. There's a carpet come to me right now. We don't have a TV, but when we're in the hospital, we visit the hospital. And when I was a child, I can't, I can't even think of this, but I'm not going to give you the name to come, but. That jingle has been used since I was a child. As soon as you hear that jingle, you know it's that carpet company. They pay money 
millions, if not billions of dollars to come up with the music that you can recognize with their product. And you know it so. You know it so. And YouTube is filled with all. You can look up. You know what's supposed to fill your heart? The Word of God. It's supposed to, you know, it's supposed to be for the honor of God. I'm looking up another one here. Let's go to Ephesians 5.19. Ephesians 5.19. Ephesians 5.19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms. We got a book of psalms. And hymns. You should have a hymnal. Old fashioned hymnal. And spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Not your pocketbook and not your private parts. And not to be fooled and deceived on the radio. Oh, I'm just so loved. He loves me. He's writing that song to me. I'm going to go get all his posters and all his albums. Ooh, I make the young girls. Come on, I was a teenager. I know. Talk to yourselves. My wife, you say, you know, my, my daughter and I, you talk to yourselves. That's, it's in the Bible. You know what I do when I, when I, when I, and this is what I do. When I'm reading and studying my Bible, I play instrumental hymns. I, some of the hymns I do, some of the ones I don't, some of them I know, but I don't know the word. You know what I do? I'll be reading my Bible and studying, and I sing my words of my heart to God that has never been recorded by man, but is probably being recorded in heaven by God. What my heart feels, what my heart is feeling, what my heart has to God, I will sing and make melodies of my own heart that has never been recorded and then just sing off to the Lord. You don't know how many different hymns I have come up with uh, with my heart to the tone of Amazing Grace at Calvary and wh whatever hymns uh, I've heard, I've done it for the Lord. I fill my heart with the word. I fill my heart with songs to God. And I have, listen, I sing, I fool around with my, with my wife, and I'm not here going home to glory, and my daughter. I, I sing a little rhyme and stuff like that. She amazes how well. And I fool back and forth. You know, I try to have fun with my daughter and my family. My daughter knows what I'm talking about, you know, little rhymes and stuff like that. It's, you know, we're giggling, we have a good time, father and daughter, husband and wife, and I don't use it for the devil. Well, that's a fine, that's a real fine place to start the heart. Yes. Yes. Because if the devil can get your heart, if the devil can plant it in your heart, and the sower went out and sowed the word of God. And you know what the, what the ground was? Some of the ground was unfruitful because the devil snatched it. Some of the ground was unfruitful because the wor world and the cares of the world choked it. Some of the cares were, you know what, I don't have faith in myself. I can't do it no longer. And it died. And some of that got in the heart, went forth 20 and 30 and 100 fold. I don't know what the folds are, but I know 100 fold. It's the best thing to get God to your heart. But when you've lived 18 years like I have, and you've given 18 years to the devil, the devil has placed a lot of things in my heart that's wicked and bad, and they still corrupt my Christian walk today. I still sin by that filthiness that the devil put in my heart. Well, nice to be for a child that gets saved young. Bring your children up in church. Bring your children up with the hymns, the old hymns. Bring your children up in the Bible. And I mean, they're going to get the world. They're going to get the filthiness of the world. But try to over power that seed of the wickedness of the heart of the holiness of God. And when, when they go in the grocery store, they won't be like you singing. They'll be like, that stuff is filthy. I don't want to hear it. It's for me. It is for the devil's pleasure that you serve the devil and not God. It's for you. It's for you to corrupt yourself. It's for it's from you. It's you giving the devil. It's for me. It's a worldwide sympathy. sympathy. I can't say that word. And they say music is the universal language. 
You can tell by the beat. You can tell by the rhythm. Sometimes you can tell by the instrument. Are we in mourning? Are we in celebration? Listen, a saxophone has no business in any church service. Now, you want to pray that down with the nakedness of New Orleans? Go ahead. You want to jazz it up? Go ahead. There's no place. A drum has no place, and it does in, in some places, in the church service. You know what the drums were in the Bible? They were to drown out the babies crying and the mothers crying when they're taking the babies and throwing them off to Molech. A good heart. Found in the Bible, a good piano, which is which is the strings of a harp, that kind of instrument. A good trumpet found in the Bible, a good flute found in the Bible. There are Bible instruments can be used. Don't be like the religion. Don't use any instruments at all. Why? They're found in the Bible. The Bible says David invented musical instruments, and he invented them not for sensual pleasure. He invented them for Jesus. Well, not Jesus Christ. He invented them for God and the honor of God and Jehovah, who has loved him, who has taken care of him, who has provided him, who's loved Israel, who's taken care of Israel, who's provided for Israel, and the presence of God. And the de then the devil wants to fornicate. The devil wants you to adulterize the music against God and the devil's glory. Don't do it. Now, again, I've used that for fair use to teach you, Christian, that that song had inspiration of the devil. Can I say that? And it shows us the devil. And that song has biblical truth. <laughs> But for Satan. And we're going to do every once in a while. There's going to be, uh, there's right now, uh, I'm going to give it a little time to go back to the hymns, Lord willing, next week. But there's another, there's another song out there that was sung during the 70s. They were called Ballads. And it's a proper song that, you know what, about fatherhood. And it doesn't come out of a Bible. But I write the songs. And the being and the person that Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the old serpent. To me, I thought it was a match. And today, you know, it's been a while since we've done the biblical truth in our hands with, with all the turmoil and, and events going on in my family. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do that. Okay. So I guess sometimes the biblical truth of our hands are not going to always be hymns. I hope you got something out of this and I hope you got as excited as I am because you know what? You, you, you got to resist the devil, the Bible says. You got to resist. And one way to resist the devil is don't get involved with his music. And churches today have his music identified and anti lost my train of thought, of the music of, of, of Jesus Christ. It's the devil's music has been changed and has been altered to make it sound Christian. You know? It's not right. And it's in the churches. Beware.